Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. It is our Advent series. We have been going through a Jesus Christmas together, and it's our last week of this study, isn't it? Are you counting down to Christmas? Are you enjoying the days off from school? I hope so. Maybe you're traveling or maybe a family coming to see you. Maybe it's just going to be another normal day. But whatever it is, we can have a special day because it is the time when Jesus came as a baby. It is his first advent and then it reminds us that because Jesus came the first time and became our savior, we also have an amazing hope that Jesus is going to come again someday a second time and we look forward to that day. So let's dive into today's lesson for December 22. We are going to wrap up the, our exploration of Luke chapter 2. So grab your Bible. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2. And we are picking up exactly where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we saw Simeon. And we saw how he got to recognize and hold baby Jesus and say, This is the Savior. This is my salvation. And now we get to meet someone else very special who was there this entire time watching and praying and praising. So join me in Luke chapter 2. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We use our big numbers to find our chapter. So chapter 2 and then we're going to start in verse 36. So little number 36. If you need a little more time to find it, just pause the video. Then when you're ready, we will read together. Luke 2, 36. My heading says, Anna sees Jesus. Anna, a prophetess, was there at the temple. She was from the family of Phanuel in the tribe of Asher. Anna was very old. She had once been married for seven years, but then her husband died and she lived alone. She was now 84 years old and Anna never left the temple. She worshiped God by going without food and by praying day and night. She was standing there at that time thanking God. She talked about Jesus to all who were waiting for God to free Jerusalem. Joseph and Mary finished doing everything that the law of the Lord commanded. Then they went home to Nazareth, their own town in Galilee. The little child Jesus began to grow up. He became stronger and wiser and God's blessings were with him. So Simeon yesterday, he saw Mary and Joseph come to dedicate baby Jesus at the temple. He saw them. He went over to them. And we saw here in verse 38, it says, Anna was standing there at that time thanking God. Oh man, if baby Jesus were to enter your church, right, to be dedicated, would you be standing there thanking God? Like what, what attitude are we found in when Jesus comes passing by? Maybe we're complaining, maybe we're sleepy, maybe we're hungry, maybe we're bored. Oh, Anna teaches us what it's like. Man, just always live a life of being thankful to God. Even though she was old, her husband had been dead for a very long time, she was still going to worship and pray and be thankful. And that is, that right there is enough of an amazing lesson for us. But the other thing here is that, so when she worshiped God by going without food, sometimes we call that fasting. So does that mean that she never ate? No, it just means that she would go through periods where she would fast so she wouldn't eat. And it was just a, an extra special time for her to just focus instead on God. Maybe every single time that her stomach growled a little bit, she remembered to be thankful for all the blessings she did have. She would say an extra prayer of thanksgiving. All right, because she prayed day and night. Maybe she had stretches where she would wake up in the middle of the night and couldn't fall back asleep. And she would always take that time to pray. Man, when I wake up in the middle of the night, maybe I need to use the bathroom or I'm thirsty or I can't fall back asleep. And I'm tossing and turning and laying there. Sometimes my mind doesn't say, oh, well, I should pray to Jesus right now. Anna teaches us several lessons, doesn't she? Because ultimately, Anna was a part of God's plan for Christmas. She was very old, but she loved God. And she, like Simeon, believed the promise that a rescuer, the Messiah, was coming. 
Her hope, like Eve's, was for the rescuer to come and crush the serpent's head. And she longed for the descendant of Abraham to come and bless the world. And she prayed every day that God would send Jesus. Now, prayer is a tricky thing. And the serpent Satan has some lies about prayer too. He's got lies about everything, doesn't he? And one of those lies might be, well, why do you have to pray to God if he already is going to do what he wants to do anyways? right? If we, we like to say that God is in charge of the universe, we say, God, your will be done. Well, why do we have to pray to God if he's in charge and things are going to happen the way he wants them to happen anyways? Or maybe another lie of Satan the serpent goes, well, what's the point of praying? I mean, you prayed over and over and over and over for that to happen and it wasn't selfish and it wasn't bad, but he didn't answer that prayer. Or you were really faithful and you read your Bible and you went to church and everyone at church prayed for so-and-so to get better and then they didn't. God didn't answer your prayer even though you prayed. You, you don't have to bother with praying. It's not important. Have you ever thought some lies like that? The thing is is that even though God is all-powerful and all-knowing and he is in charge of the world, right? He holds it in the palm of his hand. God uses our prayers to bring about his will. The things that he's decided will happen. Way back in the book of Isaiah, there's, there's a story of like um, Sennacherib and Hezekiah. And there's these stories back in there um, in chapter 37 of Isaiah. And it talks about how God says, I had a plan for these things to happen. And then when the people cried out, we put it into action. So it's like God has the plan, but we play a part. We play a part. Think about with Moses when he goes to the burning bush. He goes, I have heard the cries of my people in Egypt, and the time has come for us to set them free. It was an instant. They were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. It wasn't like, all right, we prayed, and now I'm not going to be a slave in Egypt anymore. No, God uses our prayers and he lines them up with his plan. They are intertwined. Remember yesterday we talked about holding hands with Jesus, our Savior. Our prayers are a part of God's will. They, he uses our prayers to bring about his plans. Jesus himself told us we need to pray. He says in the Lord's Prayer, that's in Matthew 6, for us to pray, thy will be done. What, what is will? What is a will? Well, when we say, God, your will be done, it means, God, I'm going to trust you to do what you know is best. Because maybe you've heard someone say they're very strong-willed or stubborn. To be strong-willed means, I think I can do it. Remember yesterday, clenched fists of control instead of open hands of surrender. When we pray, we open our hands and say, God, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to believe you. You're going to do something here. I might not know the answer to this prayer for 400 years. I might not know in my lifetime, but like Anna, I am going to be thankful. I am going to thank you for being in control, for being our salvation, our savior. We can always find those things to be thankful for because we can talk to God like he's our best friend. We're all part of the family of God, aren't we? We're his children. We can talk to him about anything. Now, Jesus, he spent a lot of time in prayer himself. And I think about this. If Jesus needed to pray, that much. How much more do we need to pray? Jesus was God and he still spent lots of time in prayer so that he could what? Resist the serpent, right? Resist the devil, Satan. Jesus, he would go and spend all sorts of times just in prayer to strengthen himself, to remember the truth of what God says about us so that we can call out and run from the lies of Satan. 
So if Jesus needed to spend that time in prayer, how much more do we need to? Christmas tells us we should pray and we should pray for what God has promised. We know that what Anna was praying for, she was praying for the Messiah, the Savior. And then baby Jesus is right there walking past and she got to see him. She was standing there thinking about thanking God. And then it says that she talked about Jesus to everyone, to everyone that she could meet who was waiting for God. And so we can have those prayers of thanksgiving like Anna. We can go to God about everything because we're his children. And when we pray in Jesus' name, the Jesus who came and walked among us and lived like us and moved into our neighborhood and then became a human. Oh, Jesus loves to take our prayers. He loves to listen to us. God hears our prayers because Jesus is going, hey, so-and-so is going through this. Did you know that this is happening over here? Jesus can't stop talking to God about all the things we're bringing to him. When we say, dear Jesus, I'm struggling with this. And you want to know what one way that our prayers are always answered? God gives us peace. He reassures us of his love. It's like taking off a really heavy backpack when we go to God in prayer. We're carrying these burdens. We're carrying this heavy backpack. And then it's like we just give it to God. We hand him the backpack and he goes, I'll carry this for you. You don't have to worry about it. We might not get the answers that we always want. We might not get answers right away. It might feel like our prayers aren't doing anything. But we know that that's a lie. We know that God is taking the heavy burdens from us. He's giving us peace and love and reassurance. And we can trust that he's going to do what is right because God is good all the time. So think about this today. How do you need God's help? How do you need God's help today? Once this video is over, maybe just take a moment to pray. Take a moment to go to God in prayer and pray about what you might need some help with. You don't need any fancy special words. Just come to God through faith in Jesus and God hears you. Oh, he loves to hear from you. And then who in your life maybe needs to know more about God's love? Could you pray for them too? Maybe pray for them and ask God to help show you ways that you can show that love to them. So once the video is over, I invite you just to take a little bit of time in prayer. Pray about some things maybe that are weighing you down, some of those burdens you're carrying, that heavy backpack, and, and give those over to God. And also think about other individuals that you could be praying for and lifting up or asking God, how can I show your love to people this week, this Christmas season? So we are going to now say a prayer together, and then I'll show you today's ornament. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, we are so thankful that because of Jesus, we have direct access to you. The veil in the temple was torn because of the perfect lamb who was slain. And we can come to you with our prayers. We know that Jesus loves hearing about everything going on in our lives. He loves talking with you about what's going on and how, they, how we can be helped, how we can be heard and answered. We're given your peace and your love and your reassurance. We know that your Holy Spirit is living in our lives and is prepared to work things out, to use us to be your love in the lives of other people. So we just ask that we might be able to share your love this Christmas season, and we're so thankful for the love that you give us. In your name, amen. So today, December 22, our ornament is Jesus' name opens prayer. Jesus' name opens prayer. So what does that mean? Does that mean when we say, dear Jesus, or are we supposed to say, dear God, or are we supposed to say, dear Father in heaven, or, or dear um, omnipotent being? Like, it really doesn't matter, but we know that Jesus, Jesus opens the, he's the staircase. Remember, he's the ladder. This was way at the beginning of the month. Jesus is our access to God. Because the veil was torn, he is the perfect lamb. And because of that, he opens, his name opens prayer. We know that Satan cannot even be around where Jesus' name is being spoken. 
And so Jesus' name opens the gates of heaven and our prayers are able to go to God. And we know that we are being heard and that we are being loved and we are being listened to. So Jesus' name opens prayer. Now on the back, you could draw praying hands. You could draw Anna praying. I went with speech bubbles and thought bubbles. All right, because sometimes our prayers are like a speech bubble where we say them out loud. Other times our prayers are like a thought bubble where we just think a prayer and God still hears those, doesn't he? So I kind of have them going up towards heaven. Doesn't matter if it's spoken aloud or just thought on inside. We know that Jesus' name opens that prayer and that God loves to hear from us, his children. All right. So I'm going to stop the video. Take some time and pray to God. Thank him for Jesus. Thank him for Christmas. And then Give him your worries, your burdens, and be filled by his love. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow.